Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about kinematics. What is kinematics? All of the questions you never had about how things move answered. Kinematics only describes emotion, not what actually causes it. Just keep that in mind. When we use kinematics, we will always use displacement and velocity, never distance and speed. Why, you ask? Because displacement and velocity can both be represented by lines. And for everything else, you need calculus. So, considering that nobody likes calculus, I suggest you stick to velocity and displacement. The next thing to keep in mind is that we live in a world without atmosphere, or at least we pretend to. Treat it like you're on the moon, but on Earth. Finally, remember that gravity is constant. The smart kids might say that gravity gets weaker with distance, so it's not, but we're going to pretend that it is. Alright, let's dive right in. There are only a handful of equations that you will need for kinematic problems, and we'll get more into the specifics later, uh, but just know that they can be separated into one-dimensional problems and two-dimensional equations. Uh, there are three different types of problems that you will encounter, the first of which is throw-up problems. It's pretty much exactly how it sounds. Pretty much anything you can throw up and catch or throw up and allow it to hit the ground is going to be a throw-up problem. A couple of quick things to keep in mind. First off, there is no horizontal motion, only vertical motion. Also, although initial velocity is positive, acceleration due to gravity is always going to be negative. Let's try an example. See here, Eric at the beginning of his motion. His velocity is currently as high as it's going to be, and, is, and gravity is already beyond accelerating him downwards. Here is Eric at his apex. His velocity is currently zero in both directions, and he is now going to start traveling downwards. Eric has now finished his motion. He is at the very bottom, and his velocity is at its max again, but in the opposite direction. The second kind of kinematic motion is called a cliff problem. This is sort of like a throw-up problem turned on its side. There is an initial x velocity, but the initial y velocity is going to be zero. It's important to realize that although there is a gravitational acceleration in the y direction, the x velocity is constant. So when you heave something off the side of a cliff, it's going to remain the same velocity in the x direction right up until it hits the ground. You'll also notice that since your object won't just be moving in a straight line, we're going to have to break up the problem into something called components. That means we take the direction and break it up into x direction and y direction. That just makes it so that we can continue to use the same equations and combine the answers in the end. At the beginning of its flight, the x component of velocity is the same as it will be the entire time. However, the y component of velocity begins at zero but will become much larger. Now the bottle is at the end of its flight. The velocity in the x direction is still constant, and the y component is at its highest magnitude due to gravity. Last but not least, we have cannon problems. The main difference between a cannon problem and a cliff problem is that the second half of a cannon problem is pretty much the same thing as an entire cliff problem. Because of symmetry of motion, the motion on the way up all the way to the apex is exactly equal and opposite to the second half of the motion. And just like with cliff problems, the x-axis component of the motion is the same throughout. And also like cliff problems, y-axis velocity is zero at the apex. We use the same equations as we did for cliff and throw-up problems. With cannon problems, the initial velocity must be broken up into separate components, x and y. This is done by multiplying the initial velocity by the trigonometric functions cosine theta and sine theta for the x and y directions respectively. Theta is the angle of which the object is initially fired. Once the object has reached its apex, it is at its maximum height, h. R, or distance in the x direction, can be solved by d equals velocity initial x times time, then multiplying it by 2 for the total distance traveled. See here as the dog begins parabolic motion. Notice that it begins with independent x and y components. Here the dog is at its apex. Notice that the x component of motion is the same as the initial x velocity, however the y component of motion is zero. Here the dog is at the same height it was released from. Its velocity is now equal and opposite to the initial velocity.